So we're gonna start our service today with the announcements. We welcome you to worship today, and as we do so, we acknowledge that for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. Centennial United Church is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat peoples and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We seek a renewed relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based on honor and deep respect. We believe God is calling Centennial United Church to become open, caring, and loving to all people, to work together as Christians in harmony to show love, respect, and forgiveness, to share our talents, listen and respond to the needs of our congregation and the local and global community, to provide opportunities for involvement of children, youth and young families, to celebrate God's presence in our lives, grow spiritually, communicate and build faith. And so we hope that each person gathered here today might truly feel welcome and know the love of God. So good morning and welcome to our worship today as you can see we're in a slightly different location than our usual sunday morning worship um we did get a new part for the furnace uh but it didn't seem to want to keep working this morning so when i got to the church it was just five degrees in the sanctuary so we decided well we have another place where we can do church from we've done it from there before so we brought everything we needed here and we thought we could worship together from my kitchen table again this morning. So welcome to worship. We hope that wherever you are joining us from, you are safe and warm and able to enjoy this service that we have put together for you this morning. 
Um, so I want to thank uh, Colin this morning. Uh, that's my son. He is uh, 16 and will be playing uh, the accompaniment for our hymns this morning. Luckily, he was already prepped and ready to do that. But in the sanctuary, the piano keys were just a little bit too cold for him to uh, be able to accompany us very well there, even if I could cozy up nice and warm with my alb and stole. So as we gather for worship here, uh, I also want to thank my daughter, Alindra, who is 14 and is running this live stream and making sure that everything gets to you as it should. If there are any problems throughout the worship service, uh, if you're on Zoom, be sure to use the chat to let us know something's not working or you can't see something or can't hear something. Uh, and if you're watching on Facebook, if you use the comments, my other daughter, Neela, thank you, Neela, is watching us live on Facebook so that she can say hello to you and also make sure that everything is working there as well. If you make a comment there about anything, then she can see that and let us know. So as we gather for worship, as we do each week, we share some of the life and work of our church. And I've given you a little bit of an update about our furnace. Uh, if there are any other announcements or joys, concerns that you'd like to share as we gather for worship, it is a way of sort of connecting us one with the other. And I invite you to use the chats or comments to invite our prayers. We, as we come for worship this morning, we have in our thoughts and prayers, the family of Don Maltus. His funeral will be tomorrow in the church, uh, hopefully with a working furnace um, as we celebrate his life. And we, so we think of his family as they grieve and all of his close friends. We're good. We gather all of our joys and our concerns and we light this candle as a reminder of the light of Christ given to us all. A symbol of God's presence each and every day. I invite, invite you to uh, join with me now in our call to worship. As one week finishes and another week begins, we have come to this time of worship that we might place ourselves, our lives, our loved ones, and all our cares and joys in the embrace of God, whose welcome is always assured. We come confident that God is always with us. We come thankful that in this world in which we live, we have a spiritual home and people to companion us on our journey. We give thanks to God. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today to worship you. Confident as always that you are with us in all our different places. You receive our prayers our laments, and our celebrations. As we worship today, make us one in spirit and one in body, as you yourself were embodied in the person of Jesus, in whose name we pray and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us join in our opening hymn from More Voices. Come and seek the ways of wisdom.
So I'm going to read for you now from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 31a. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. In the passage we just read, Paul talks about the church being like a body with many parts that work together. So I thought we could try a fun little experiment. I'm gonna tell a story, but I'm gonna get um, Alindra to turn off my microphone first. I guess I could turn off my own microphone now that we're here. Oh. Okay, are you guys ready? I'm going to turn off my microphone. I'm going to tell a story. Uh, 
how'd that, how'd that work out for you? Anybody know what my story was about? Anybody out there uh, read lips? <laughs> Neela just jumped in to say, we couldn't hear your story. Yes, that was the point because I turned off my microphone. But if you read lips, maybe people who read lips could still hear my story by seeing my story. You see? I didn't hear your story, so I'm all good. I know. Yeah, she was, she was good because she's sitting right here with me in the room. Okay. All right. So I, that reminded me of like during this pandemic, um, sometimes what happens is um, when we cover our mouths with a mask, suddenly that also affects our ability to hear because we don't realize how much we see people's lips to help us to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with this experiment. And now this time I am going to turn off my camera, okay? So I'm turning off my camera now. And I am gonna ask you to describe to me what I am holding up. <laughs> This is a little bit harder. Well, now you can hear me, but you can't see what I'm holding up, can you? If we were here together in the same room, you might be able to, to um, I, I would have asked you to close your eyes. So that would be even trickier. But if I had kids all around me, I'd ask you, you know, how would you be able to see what this is, even though you can't see it? If your eyes are closed or my camera's off, you would touch it. Alindra says, yeah, you would touch it. And if you touched this, Alindra, how would you describe it? Let's get, I'm going to get Alindra to touch it so she can describe it to you. It's round. It's round. It's kind of bumpy. It's kind of bumpy. And kind of squishy. A little bit squishy. Um, anybody got any guesses given that description? So you could use like a described video. All right, I'm going to start my camera. She saw it, so I can't let her guess. Uh, do you have a guess, Colin? Did you see what I was holding up? Neela? Here it is. It was an avocado. Oh, we didn't give size. You needed to be more specific. So I, there's a few commercials on TV right now where they um, do what would happen if you didn't have described video, what you might think would happen, and then with described video. And so these are some of the ways that our body can work together. We can use our, our hands to see we can use our uh, eyes to hear. Uh, it's kind of a fun little experiment, right? So it's important that we, our body parts can kind of work together to help us in this world, right? Each one has our own body to use just the way it is. And we adapt and interact and we use the parts that work best to accomplish what we want to do. It's pretty amazing. We can use our different abilities to do great things. Just like all the parts of our body can work together and help us to understand the world and to be in the world, we as a church and each member of our congregation is important in the whole body of Christ and to make the church what it is to, today. So we all shine together to be the light of Christ in the world. And we all work together to share God's love in the world. So we're going to sing about that. We're going to sing again this week, this little light of mine, only this time we're going to add in the second verse too, to remind ourselves that whatever's working for us, we, we don't want to hide what we have under a bushel. No, we're going to want to let it shine.
to invite uh, Jim B. Croft to turn on his camera and his microphone so that he can uh, share with us the scripture readings for today. Good morning. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is from the Old Testament from the book of um, Nehemiah, and it's chapter 8, uh, verses 1 to 3, 5 and 6 and eight to 10. Ezra reads the law to the people. By the seventh month, the people of Israel were all settled in their towns. On the first day of that month, they all assembled in Jerusalem, in the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra, the priest and scholar of the law, which the Lord had given Israel through Moses, to get the book of the law. So Ezra brought it to the place where the people had gathered, men, women, and the children who were old enough to understand. There in the square, by the gate, he read the law to them from dawn until noon, and they all listened attentively. As Ezra stood there on the platform, high above the people, they all kept their eyes fixed on him. As soon as he opened the book, they all stood up. Ezra said, praise the Lord, the great God. All the people raised their arms in the air and answered, Amen, Amen. They knelt in worship with their faces to the ground. They gave an oral translation of God's law and explained it so that the people could understand it. When the people heard what the law required, they were so moved that they began to cry. So Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest and scholar of the law, and the Levites, who were explaining the law, told all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God, so you are not to mourn or cry. Now go home, have a feast, share your food and wine with those who haven't enough. Today is holy to our Lord, so don't be sad. The joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. <clears throat> Our responsive reading today is Psalm 19. We'll be reading it responsively. <clears throat> ah, quirks, sorry, quarks and electrons. Crystals and cells, stems and trunks and limbs and bodies on the land, in the water, in the air. The elements of the universe wait to expand our understanding. Rocks have no words, nor do cells have syllables. Yet their message can be read anywhere. <clears throat> Even the fiery stars racing at unimaginable speeds through space yield their secrets to those willing to probe the limits of God's universe. And what do they find? An underlying harmony, a delicate equilibrium built on the value of everything, value of everything. living or inanimate, inanimate, past, present, and future. There are no exceptions. 
no one is above the law of interdependence. Life dies and becomes new life. Spirit and flesh are one. My fate is inextricably linked to yours. And our fate to the trees and insects. This is the beginning of wisdom. It is better than wealth, more valuable than possessions. Awareness of it will change us forever. But we are too often blind. We close our ears to the voices of the winds and the waves, to the insights of the rocks and the plants. God, keep us from thinking we know it all. Human minds cannot encompass eternity. An assembly of facts does not equal truth. Keep us open to wonder, to beauty, to <clears throat> mystery, O greatest of mysteries. Oh, so that was a paraphrase by James Taylor, Jim Taylor. Are we unmuted? Okay. Our gospel reading this morning is from uh, the fourth chapter of Luke, uh, verses 14 to 21. Jesus begins his work in Galilee. <clears throat> Then Jesus returned to Galilee, and the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. The news about him spread throughout all the territory. He taught in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath, he went, as usual, to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures and was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the people in the synagogue had their eyes on him. As he said to them, this passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it read. Here endeth the readings for today. Thank you, Jim. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I've been doing a lot of thinking this week about what it means to be human. And I'll admit, it wasn't all sparked by reading the Bible. Part of what got me thinking about all of this was reading a book Wim lent to me called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which I shared at our book sharing event on Wednesday night. Published 30 years ago now, the book raises questions and offers answers about humanity and how we got to be where we are today with the world on the brink of catastrophe. I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that, so there's no need for spoiler alerts for those of you who haven't read it yet, but suffice it to say, 
it got me thinking about humanity. Also percolating in the back of my mind all week is the fact that this is the week of prayer for Christian unity, which always gets me thinking about the differences between the Christian churches and how we got to where we are today with all these struggling churches right here in our own little town. And you've read the articles, I don't need to spell it out, right? Because I tried, but I just, I can't even put those words on paper. But this week, we focus on what unites us and how we can work together. To that end, I even hosted a meeting of the Clearview Ministerial to look at how we can support one another and work together despite our differences for the good of everyone. There are ways we do that already, like through the food bank, but we're hoping to do more. It got me thinking about how important it is for humanity to come together to work for good in the world. Then on Thursday night, I attended a webinar that's part of an online series of wise women retreats hosted by the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. And this one was led by Cole Arthur Riley, who wrote a book called This Here Flesh and talked to us about how disconnected we have become from our bodies and led us through a series of practices, including one of my favorite, as you know, breath prayers to help us remember our bodies that have been dismembered by our culture. Perhaps you're wondering how any of this all connects together or more importantly to our scripture readings for today or to a sermon at all. Perhaps you're thinking, come and seek the ways of wisdom was pushing it as an opening hymn. I have to admit to you, this isn't my typical reflection on the scripture readings but I hope it does have something to say to us all. What kept coming through to me again and again this week was the sense that at the root of all our troubles and sorrows and struggles and conflicts is our profound disconnection. Whether we're disconnected from creation, having exempted ourselves from the laws of nature to put ourselves at the place of ruler of all, leading to a world on the brink of destruction. Or we're disconnected from one another, and this shows up in so many more ways than just a failure to unite as Christians, leading to every kind of human atrocity. Or we're disconnected from our very selves, unable to even breathe deeply, open our hearts, feel the joy and pain of living. And so I come before you today to place all of this disconnection in the light of the scriptures, in the light of our faith. And I found myself making these connections. Disclaimer, these connections are not based on any proper scriptural exegesis as taught in theological college. I'm just spitballing here. When I read the story that Jim read for us today from Nehemiah, of the reading of the law at the water gate, the gathering of all the people to hear the law being read. I was struck by the fact that once again, when they heard the word, all the people wept. It doesn't tell us why they were moved to tears, but I'd like to imagine that they are feeling a deep sense of connection both with the words of the scripture that are being read that connect them to all those who've gone before them through time and space, through exile and reclamation, and to the God who created them, and with one another just there in that space as they stand together as one, raise their hands and shout, amen, amen. I mean, just Imagine for a second what that is like. I know it's been a while since we were able to gather as one in a packed sanctuary. So how about I share a memory? The summer we moved to Ontario, the kids and I had a chance to go to a Taylor Swift concert at Rogers Stadium in downtown Toronto. Coming from very small town, Saskatchewan, I mean, very small, less than a thousand. My kids had never been to anything like it. 
As we entered the stadium, each one of us was given a bracelet that we were to put on and then throughout the concert, it lit up and changed colors to match the songs and the feelings. And that sense of connection as we all lit up together, singing and dancing, thousands of us, was amazing. There isn't a doubt in my mind that now, after this pandemic time, when we have the opportunity to be together again like that, and experience that kind of like unity of heart and mind and body, one with another, there will be tears, right? As the Israelites gathered together after exile, before the water gate, and moved and praised God as one, is it possible they were moved to tears as they remembered and reconnected to their faith and to their God and to each other? Is it this connection that Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Levites want the people to celebrate and nurture when they instruct them to go and share food together, to deepen that connection with one another, to give to those who don't have enough and really be together? Is that what they're asking them to celebrate? Is that why that day is favored by God? When we remember what we have in common, when we reconnect with one another, when we work together as one body, honoring each other and every aspect of ourselves, and each other and all creation as part of the whole in the way that Paul speaks of in our scripture reading from 1 Corinthians. When we continue the work we have in common with Christ, bringing good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, letting the oppressed go free, joining all together in community, when we really feel deep in our hearts the connections that unite us as one within ourselves, with each other, with all creation, then we find the root of our humanity. Then there is cause for rejoicing and there is hope for tomorrow. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we're going to sing together now a hymn that speaks of this commonality that we share deep in our hearts. It's from More Voices, number 154, Deep in Our Hearts.
set it up. So today for our minute for mission, I actually found a minute for mission that was from last year um, because it really tied in to what I was talking about earlier about um, including all and including all of the different parts of our bodies and the differently way, different ways we are abled. And this is a story about um, the, that inclusion and the work we're doing in the United Church uh, with the help of Mission and Service to include those who are differently abled. So let's watch this video together. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Um, I just realized that um, I put it in the PowerPoint, but then I didn't save it correctly when I sent it to Alindra. So I'm just going to share and hopefully you'll, you'll get it from my screen. Did you know that one in five Canadians live with at least one disability? That's 6.2 million people. Disability is an issue that affects all of us. That's why the United Church of Canada partners with people from other denominations to raise awareness. People like Anglican disability activist Linda Katsuno, who is widely considered a pioneer in the field. I see myself as somebody that's a child of God. I see myself as someone who can give back. It really raises a question of mutuality. I hope that's how people see me. I hope they don't see me as somebody who's unable to do something. Many people think of the issue of disabilities as people who suffer. It's a social exclusion of people that leads to injustice. There is still so much more work to be done to participate in the liturgy. Liturgy means the work of the people. So we have every right to sort of claim our place at the table. And that has to be a theology that we, we work towards, a theology of inclusion. Your generosity supports events and education that help create healthy, strong, welcoming communities. Communities where no one is left out where we are all seen as children of God. Let's build a world where everyone belongs. Make a gift today. So let us join in prayer. God of loving unity, we unite our hearts and minds in prayer this day, longing for connection and community where all find a place and all are welcome and respected. 
We thank you for the many colors, cultures, and customs that we share in this world. Help us to remember that even in our differences, your love unites us. And so we pray for all of creation, that it might be respected and protected and seen as the good you intend. We pray for each other, especially for those who feel disconnected from a loving community. Help us to include those who have been excluded and to find ways to welcome those who are looking for ways to join with us. May our worship this day be communion for all who find us, even though we cannot be together in person. We reach out through these prayers to all those places we cannot reach any other way, and to all those people who need to hear a word of comfort and love and peace, to those we name aloud and those in our hearts. We think of all those who grieve the death of Don Maltus. We think of the family that lost their children in a fire in Brampton. We take this time to pray also for ourselves, that we too might feel connected to your love that lives in us, and so comforted by your presence in all our living. May all these prayers that we offer and all the gifts we bring reconnect us with your creation, with one another, and with ourselves this day. Oh God, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Amen. So we're going to sing together again, hymn number 79. Spirit, open my heart. We had a little accident with the cat during that prayer, so I'm not sure where the camera will be pointed for this hymn, but we're going to try it. And uh, we, oh, not bad, not bad. Um, we hope you, that you will be able to hear yes, us. And write us to sing.
Our blessing and commendation today was written by Donna Sinclair uh, for World uh, for the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, and based on our song of faith. Blessings for the ancestors behind us. Blessings from the angels above us. Blessings on the work that's before us. Blessings to the earth that's beneath us. Blessed by the love that's among us. Blessed by our church. We go from this place. Blessed. With connection. Amen. So I thank you for joining us for worship today and pray that your week may be filled with connections, community, and blessings. Amen. Amen.